this time around for Onika Esports to hopefully maybe take this to a one for one. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number two here. Falcon Esports versus Onik Esports. This is going to be the question. Will it be Falcon being able to take it two to zero against Onik? Or will Onik be able to level it out with the composition that they have chosen? But one of the things that makes me really surprised from the side of Onik Esports is the heroes that they have chosen to place on Keyboy. Keyboy, two teams, two games in a row, sorry, has been using using this Matilda and I feel like it's not dynamic enough for someone like Keyboy. I preferred someone like the Kufra perhaps but we'll see what happens because maybe it does complement the playstyle understanding that this time around they have brought the Barretts in. Again. Wow. Early action here. There you go. Naomi finding a kill first blood for Falcon but they actually going to get committed here. Onik Esports all crashing down. They find Ken this time. And they're going to be careful. Oh, Drian giving a kill up here to Justin. That's not what you want to do for that Eve. Oh, that, that is a brutal interaction right there. Really, really brutal. Where, I mean, both junglers had to pay the price. And unfortunately, they didn't really get too far ahead for Onik. Falcon, on the other hand, they are getting some great information all across the board. They see yellow, they see yellow flash, he kind of walks down, grabs a camp for himself. Okay, that's one down. If you look down on towards bot side, where is this Natalia? And Onik immediately start telling Sealy, hey, back up. We have zero idea. She's most probably bottom side. Yeah, I also want to bring up, again, with what Eterna mentioned about Keyboy, I, I feel like maybe it doesn't fit his personality is what I feel like you're saying. And at the same time, like his play style, right? But maybe this could be some type of interaction that they're relying on for Drian on the Julian pick. So we'll see how that plays out. I still think circling Eagle and even a Matilda in general, like guiding win is such a savior in a lot of situations. So they could play around that. So right now, on Esports, contesting this turtle. They don't want to give it up, but another oh. kill, and that's going to be the jungle that they find. Now the rest of the team are looking to find another one on Sands. They got to be careful because of Boots there to help them out. Naomi, look, hunting again. Sands taking out killing spree for Naomi. This is bad news here for Onik Esports. Onik Esports are scattered at this stage. I mean, Falcon are just like obliterating them in all of the aspects. The fact that the pressure coming in from Naomi is just so evident. Onik Esports, even if they do want to go ahead and try and rotate and try to go on the initiative to look for these picks off the board or even some trades at this stage, it's just so impossible because of the map pressure, the vision that Naomi can have. Yeah, I mean, it's just the control, right? It, it's all about maintaining that control and that stranglehold on Onik Esports the moment they get that lead. Right now, it's 1k, but it can definitely extend as CW looks to clear that lane down on bot side. Yeah, he's just going to use the Blazing Duo to clear that. Also, interesting thing, you know, to see CW running the sprint on a Claude. Now, we've seen a couple different variations of, you know, spells for Claude. How do you think sprint's going to work for Claude, Gideon? Is that good? Is it better than the Vengeance? I think in this particular case, it might not be, but Boots, he's yeah. going to get punished for trying to do Uranus things. He's trying to be a pain in Falcon's side, and Falcon's like having none of it. It's it's funny because earlier in the draft, I was like, oh, the Eternal Battle, not much is going to happen in the XP lane, right? It's, it's Esmeralda versus Uranus, but actually, Naomi doing a great job at punishing, like you said, those Uranus things, you know, they, especially with this high and dry, you know, when you are... All by yourself, that's not what you want to do against a Naomi. I was going to say against this <laughs> Natalia, but against <laughs> Naomi, literally, because the performance so far, it's it's a minute per kill. Yeah, and, and I think it's only going to get better from here, right? So CW, he's playing extra safe. He's thinking like, oh boy, even if my team is here, I could still get one shot. They probably know the battle spell timers, and Naomi, he is off cooldown, right? He's ready to rip. Oh, right now, they're actually already pushing on eSports down. Meanwhile... Boots, gonna go ahead and just cut the lane the best he can. Mean and and hopefully not that Naomi isn't around the corner because this is actually still quite the confidence coming out from Boots after what happened just a little bit ago. I mean, already it's only been four minutes. <laughs> it's already been four. Only sorry, only been four minutes, and the dominance that Falcon has really set up for themselves is just so evident all across the board. I mean, the way that they're going in for that next neutral objective and that turtle, and the way that Onik can't really respond to this. And we'll see what happens. I mean, once again, they can't contest it. So what can Onyx Esports do at this stage? 
Well, right now they got to be careful. Flicker going to be committed. Ken spinning around. There's a real world manipulation. CW. Oh, he takes too much damage. Unstoppable as Naomi finds another target. He didn't even get a chance to even use the Blazing Duet. Wow. I mean, it's not over just yet here. Uh, they pull back. See, even though that CW dies, it's not the end of the world for Onyx Esports. The game is still very, very early, and Falcon have not really made any solid progress other than Silent down on the bottom side with this turret. Breaking that is going to allow him to clear this wave and early rotate towards that top side to try to look for another structure. Can I just say, this is, I mean, Silent is just being silent once again in the lane, but now the focus here. Boots going to be able to survive that Consecration. Yellow Flash, you got to be careful too. Going back to it. Ken, not going to be able to find anything just yet. So again, Silent, able to get that turret down in the bottom lane. And we were talking about him in the draft, and now it's like the Naomi show, right? So here we go. Real World Militia is going to be committed. Nothing happening with that one. I like that. The Naomi show. There you go. That's Makes it. sense. And that's exactly what's we're, what we're seeing on screen. I mean, 501 in his KDA really helping Falcon with that gold lead that they have brought on for themselves. 2,300 for the moment. As we can also take a little peek onto the player's gold here, it seems like Silent as well as Yellow Flash is at the top of the leaderboard. And interestingly enough, it's going to be Boots number one from the side of Onyx. So that's not something that we want to see too much. We'd like to see someone perhaps like someone that can carry it being at the top. But we'll see what happens because like you mentioned earlier, it is still six minutes of the game, almost seven, and a lot of things can happen in that duration. Mm -hmm. Yep. And now, as they move towards that top side, Silent easily going to be, be able to take this tower all by himself like a big boy. As on Esports can't even walk up to it safely. I mean, the setups coming in from Falcon are really nice, and they have the next plan. Get the turtle for free. Walk on over. Let's double check their jungle. Ken notices, hey, they have all they don't have their uh, orange buff right now, so let's try and take mid turret too. Wow, they're just making power play after power play. CW popping the Blazing Duet, trying to clear the minions, and he does. The turret's not going to go. Oh, it is going to get taken out by Silent once. Man, again, Silent, he's 0-0-1. Zero, zero but you saw his goal just a minute ago. He's got things rolling for him because he knows Naomi is doing what he has to do, right? Ken is even finding the targets. Justin picking up an Ice Queen Wand is huge because now that real-world manipulation will be even scarier for Onik Esports. They already can't commit to anything, it seems like. And look at the 4K gold lead as well. Oh, uh, what the... I think at this stage of the game, right, like Yellow, Yellow Flash, he's totally fine in this lane, right? I, I don't see him dying anytime soon in 1v1 against Drian, arguably even. He doesn't mind. And, and against Uranus, well, I mean, it's not going to go anywhere anyways. But ideally, you've got to make sure that Uranus doesn't get too out of hand. He needs the farm, but if you could slow it down even by a bit, it's great. Naomi, on the other hand, I don't know. Eventually, Naomi will start to fall off. I'm just yeah. not entirely sure when it gets a li uh, against a lineup like Onik, who again, CW is always going to be at risk. I feel like even if Naomi does fall off, at that point, it's like you've already done your job. You've already done your part. You've allowed the rest of your team to get to the point they need is specifically silent, right? So I, I feel like right now, Onik Esports is just finding a hard time to actually find moments, especially with Sans on this Barats pick, right? You actually, what you're supposed to do is try to find a Daytona's welcome, but who do you even target here at this point? Because right now, what we're seeing is just Falcon Esports opening up the map, taking turrets, taking objectives, and just continuing on building that gold lead for them. I completely agree with you. And like the way that they've drafted as well is what I've noticed is oh. what happened? He just got melted down. Drian once again, third death here in the ninth minute that's definitely not a good shade but yes as i was talking about earlier was that on esports they don't have much room to play with right because from the side of falcon they can go for pickoffs let's say with naomi they can go for cc with ken and naomi and even the real world manipulation if they want to go for team fights that can also be topped off with someone like yellow flash with the falling star moon but when we take a look at on esports what are they supposed to do what can they work with they do have some source of source of cc but as i speak here once again that real world manipulation is proving to be a huge nuisance oh man boots should be fine here but he gets thrown in the wall a little bit, but they grabbed the turret. That's what they were after. They're happy with that. And you can just see, I mean, even the tanky heroes for Onik Esports, their health bars aren't lasting very long. Yep. 
Oh, this is uh, becoming more and more of a rough game for Onyx Esports because as soon as Falcon hit the 32k mark, they're going to get even stronger and Onyx Esports will have to concede a lot of space and time as well as the last of their tier 2s on top side. I mean, there is an argument that they should be able to break into an inhibitor at this stage of the game, but let's see how resilient Onyx Esports is going to be. I mean, right now they definitely have, they have clear, like they they can clear the minions the best they can. Again, this is just a normal Lord. But will Falcon Esports actually convert this into a turret, opening up the base here of Onyx Esports? It looks like they're going for it as he gets the heavy spin right onto the turret, and it goes over to Silent, plus the turret down, forcing the flicker out, double kill, two fall for Onyx Esports. Lord's still going to be worked on here. Boots taking quite a bit of damage himself, destroying that turret. Here we go, Falcon Esports at a huge lead. Keyboy, you gotta be in trouble. They should be able to clear these minions just fine. Yellow Flash trying to zone them out. The wave at top was pushed in too. But right now, Falcon Esports a very confident 9.4k gold lead. That's the largest gold lead that we've seen so far. The largest gold gap we've seen so far. And I would have been like completely surprised if you told me like yesterday that that was going to be between Falcon and Onyx Esports. I mean, Falcon just really transcending all our expectations and I'm curious to see like how and what have they gotten with that with such an immense gold lead here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out any outs for Onyx Esports, right? I mean, the only way is just to defend and pray for the best. Oh man. Right now, they're pushing this mid turret down. He's gonna be going down here now. Looking for another one. Ken finding that heavy spin on the right target. CB, CW taken out of the picture. And now they could actually be looking to get another inhibited turret. Double kill though for him. Can they defend? Onyx Esports still has a little bit of wave clear left. Meanwhile, Falcon Esports. Oh, they gotta be careful. Yellow Flash goes in. Drian able to get to the fountain to regen. Now the waves are pushing in. Are they looking to sweep Onyx Esports? And they do. Falcon Esports 2-0. They should be proud of that victory. To all their fans out there, well done on a 2-0 Falcon Esports. Really breaking the mold here. And, wow. uh,